Hello everyone. Um, we're about to start and if you can see I already washed my hands so I'm just going to dab to towel them. Now cleanliness like I I said is very important in making new goods. If you mix it there you would mix it in every other aspect of the production. Okay so um we've done the sterilization remember the nine process um steps in this which you had in the theory the first was the sterilization which i already did yesterday these are all that i'm going to be using this is the whisk this is the sieve this these are the two um, buckets or bowl that you need. Your spoon, then the measuring spoons and cups. This comes in different um, sizes and measurements, but I'm going to be using this. And this is, okay, when we reach the measurements um, step, I'll tell you. So what I'm trying to say, I people do also brought this and I'll tell you the need for it. Now what I'm saying is that I am done with the sterilization method. And um, to do that, you just need to wash everything. You can see this brush. It was used to wash my bottles for um, packaging my yogurt, okay? So if you're buying your bottles, you need to have this to wash them properly with salt. So everything here has been washed with um, soap that's morning fresh, cold water first, then salt and warm water to rinse. And then you keep them to dry. So this is the method you use for your sterilization. Now we're going to the, the, the second stage or second level of the production process, which is our measurement. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, now for the purpose of this class, I'm going to be doing 250 grams of milk. That's, when I, that's what I'll be using. And like I said in the theory, 100 grams equals your one liter of water for the production. That's the formulation. So if you're making 500 grams of milk, that means you're using five liters of water. So now that I'm making 250 grams, I'm going to be using 2.5 liters of water. But because of consistency, remember the types of, of yogurt I talked about? Your traditional yogurt is the, the watery type, the main one that is just very watery that you drink. All right? But these days will have con different consistency as people like it as you want modification. Um, and the one that I'm, um, uh, I showed you before now, uh, okay, I'm still going to show you again. The consistency is very thick. So you can even use your spoon to eat it even though it's drinkable, okay? So now I want a, a thicker consistency. So I'm not going to be doing the 250 liters of water. I'm going to be doing 1.5 liters of water. So if you want it more um, um, watery, you can do the 250, okay? So just know the standard procedure and then the modification that I'm making. You can make yours as well. All right, so let's go. Now... For the milk, this is calibrated in ml, and you know ml is your liter. So this is you can see the amount. So you can also use it for liquid. So two, um, this is two fifty ml here. Now you need to convert this to gram, and for you to be able to convert this to gram, your one mil, your one ml equals zero point fifty fifty three gram. So you multiply zero point fifty three gram into this 250 you'll have about 132 so 132 times two that that will give me it 132 plus some um you know fractions then um multiply that by two i have about um 265 yeah so it's against 250 so but now note that you don't have to fool your measurements this way that this level is your measurement anything above this level is an addition okay so um, this is for this my water already is here and this is 1.5 liter this is 1.5 liter this is what i'm going to be using i'm going to be using 50 liter to or dissolve my milk and then i'm going to be boiling one liter to pasteurize remember i said you have to use potable water and you know what potable water is 
So let's just go ahead and measure our milk. Now let me show you, this is what I'm using. And this is 850 gram. So this will do for this and for the Greek yogurts that we'll be making after this, all right? So um, let's just do the measurements, guys. Okay, so this is the one that we'll be using for the inoculation, all right? So when we get to that process, I will explain better. Now with the measurements that we're doing, please remember everything has to be sterilized. And your measurements need to be accurate. Okay. Your measurements should be accurate. This to level it. Okay, so this is one thirty two. So the first one here is one thirty two. And this is another 132, 132.3 points, um, three or three about here. So everything, this times two will give me 260 gram, 265 gram, and I need 250. So I need to reduce uh, 15 gram. So, and this is my 30 ml. If you convert it 0 0.53 times 30, I will have 15. So this will give me 15 gram. All right. So if I remove this, I'm removing this, this is my 15 gram. So what we have here now is 250 gram, guys. So the measurement for your milk is um, correct now. Then you close this very well. Make sure it's air tight. Do not allow air to enter. If that happens, you might just have a spoiled yogurt. So I'm just going to do this and I will tie it up here. Or the brick yogurt, which we're going to be making shortly. Alright? Now remember that I talked about the coarseness of your milk. The way I'm touching this, you can even, if you listen very well, let me close my mouth, listen very well. Can you hear the sound? It's coarse. It's not finely blended or processed. So you need, you need a fresh coarsed milk to, to have a creamier and very tasty uh, you got at the end now I'm not going to pour this back because my hand even though I sterilized my hand but I've touched some things so I'm not pouring back I'm just going to discard it now we are almost done why I brought this is to show you that if you don't have this cup these measuring cups you can use this as your 100 gram of milk all right you can use it as your 100 gram of milk you have to but you have to make it a, to come a little bit up yeah so that's it that's what i started with when i started now the next thing will be to um if you have a milk that you're doubting that you feel is lumpy that's why you have this you can put it here and then use this to make sure that you you made everything smooth or if you finish or you're um, dissolving and pasteurizing before you transferred to your inoculation buckets, you can use this to strain. That's another um, uh, step of the process. So what I'm going to do now would be just to um, strain, uh, sorry, dissolve this with 50 liter, 50 liter of this water, and then we'll go into um, pasteurization. 
Okay, so let's dissolve. And this is why you need the whisk. If you don't have it, you can have a spatula, the one you caught on Engari, that you have not used for anything oil. You can make it clean and use it. So I'm just going to be taking like just 50 ml, 50 ml liters. Please, if you cannot guess it, use a 50 ml bottle to do this. I will show you now later that it is 50 ml that I used. This is where it is now. This is where it is. I will show you um, a 50 ml um, rub if I don't forget. Now you just have to do this quickly. So that it doesn't form lines. You have to do it quickly and very hard. This is done. This is done. Okay. If you look at it, you see everything is smooth now. There's no lump. Make sure you do not have any lump and turn it as quickly as possible. And please reduce. If you're talking, most times when I'm talking, I shift a little bit. I push my face a little bit afar. Do not mind the way you talk when you're making yogurt, so you don't have your saliva to, you know, throw into the mixture. That could ruin your yogurt, okay, or sweat. You have to do this in a very sterilized environment as well. All right, now I'm done. I'm going to just cover this and then boil this one. I'm just going to boil this for pasteurization all right now there are also two ways to do this this is the first method and very simple that you can do the second one is that you might just use this water the whole of the water to to do this right so when you're done you now put it on your flame and get it to to boil maybe it starts boiling but while you're doing that you keep turning so that you keep stirring it so it doesn't form film so by the time you're it, you're done when it's a little bit um boiled you stop and then wait for it for it to cool before you inoculate but i'm going to just do this method it's if you but if you must do this to make sure it's with a pot that you don't use to cook a pot that is made for this okay so i'm just going to boil this bring it to the highest boiling point and then transfer it to this place and then allow it to go this is what we call pasteurization this helps to if there's any form of germs now in here or something this will help help to um one destroy them and then it helps your yogurt to to form better especially the boiling one too but um, this is the, the method we're using here okay so hold on guys while we get this boiled okay guys so our water is boiled to the highest boiling point you can see you can see it's still boiling all right so time to do this So hot. Okay. So we're done with this process. Yeah. So we leave it to pasteur uh, pasteurize now. It's very hot. As it's pasteurizing, it's also cooling. That's another stage. It's cooling. So we'll allow it to cool to the temperature of 42 to 44 degrees Celsius. Now, this also depends on the weather. You know we have a kind of um, dry weather now. If this was to be your winter, that's the Hamilton season. Like when this, the weather is very cold, you can bring it up to 50 or something. But for now, the 42 to 44 will be okay for us. Also remember that when you're making Greek, it's a different thing too. The Greek should be hotter. The temperature should be, you know, higher than this because that one got more of milk and um not much of water okay so 
also remember that we're using probiotic so you do not allow this to go to the lowest uh go below 40 42 degrees Celsius now how do we um determine the temperature um if you have your thermometer like i said it's optional good but if you don't have it fine we'll still do this me i don't even have right now so we're going to be using our index finger to test for this so but i can't even right now as it is i can't even leave my hand for eight seconds so but by the time that when i dip my index finger and i can sustain it for for eight seconds which you can just count one two three four five to eight then the temperature will be okay the um, probiotic culture will be able to survive here so let's leave it right now to cool but before i would do that i also need to wash my hands and dry it off so i don't introduce this i'm still still very far talking to you guys you see the way i'm using my finger i'm far away from this so i don't even put saliva inside there okay so um or you can talk with your um, nose mask you can do that so that even when you have this cup of saliva it doesn't go into what you're doing so when it's time i'll come and check this and then we'll do our inoculation all right So I've been checking it. This is the third time I'm going to check it. If you see, I've washed my hands. I just want to try so I can check again. I'm sure by now it will be okay. So you just use your index finger and dip it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, still hot, but it's okay. At least I wasn't shouting. So guys, now it's time to inoculate. Remember what I told you about using a fresh probiotic. That's, remember your probiotic is your, your store-bought culture. Or your already made yogurt, the one you, you're taking from already made yogurt, right? But the other one, which is your life culture, the bacteria itself is, it's you know what we are dealing with now we're gonna be seeing that one in the advance okay so i said something about making sure that it's fresh now i did a video where i show you the one that i bought earlier that one was made on the 27th of march i have to still go to buy this one that was made on the first of this month and today is fourth just three days because i want to use something very very fresh okay it goes a long way your milk type your probiotic um state goes a long way your water goes a long way in this in making that sure that you come out with a very good product okay so nothing stops me from using that or that one but i decided to go for this all right and like i said when i don't have mine i like to get from these people at this point so now before this inoculation i'm just going to transfer into our this is the inoculation bowl this is where you do ferment it doesn't mean that you cannot even do it here you still can don't worry when i'm making the greek yogurt i will do it on one but if you have like if you're using the machine that is made that is for you good they have one for inoculation they have one for this sterilic and um, pasteurization so you just turn it into the pot. Now, let me also show you something. Why I needed the sieve. It's not compulsory, it's optional. Assuming you have lumps here, then you will just need the sieve to do this. Alright? And make sure that you have no lumps at the end of the day. But I don't have lumps here. So, you see, there is no lumps. So after we transfer it, we are going to inoculate. And how do you inoculate? You use two spoon of this. If you're using probiotic, you use two tablespoon to one gram. So this is 250 grams. So I'm going to use five. But if you're using the live coach, the bacteria itself, it's just a dip. A dip. Because if you over culture, your product won't come out fine. The end product won't come out fine. Okay. 
this is sealed so you see I just bought it and then we're just going to do this you see how thick this is one I hope it's clear two three four and five so this thickness is the consistency I want that's why I didn't use up to two and um, half liter of water and I said if you don't want this consistency you can use your two and a half normal water volume okay so I just get some from here oh, wait. This one. I hope you're seeing what I'm doing this will just help me to So you just pour it in. And you use your whisk. You have to do this to make sure that everything is homogenized. Okay? Then you cover. Now, inoculation is done. The next is to set it for fermentation. Cover it very well airtight and then you have the options of where to put this okay you can you can depending on the weather you can put it in your fridge that is not safe if you have a fridge that you're not using you can put it in there for eight hours but to get more tartness you know that sour kind of taste you can leave it for 12 hours but the standard time is eight hours or you can put it in your, maybe in a cooler. You can also put it in your oven or your microwave. Not that the one that is on. If the weather is so cold, so cool, you can warm up the microwave or your oven a little before setting this in. But if not, you just put it there. And then you can wrap it with nylon or towel. I'm going to wrap this with towel too. So... Fermentation here we go. It needs a hot, so it needs a warm environment. It doesn't need oxygen. All right, I'm coming. Let me wrap it. Now I'm going to first of all wrap it in this kind of um, cellophane bag before I use towel to, to cover it. Why? Because no matter how neat the towel is. A towel to me is a towel, even though this is not, this hasn't been, the towel I'm going to be using now is not really for cleaning body, but you can have towels that you don't use for wiping your body. You can have kitchen towels that I like, that if you have, what you're doing can contain it fine. If you can contain your container, you need not. You can have towels by your mind using for your body. You can use it to do this well. And by the time I'm done wrapping it in the towel, I will still put it at the back of my freezer. Okay, I didn't tell you. That's another way. You can put it at the back of your freezer because the back of your freezer is always hot. Now, this towel is not for cleaning body, guys. So if you have the one that you don't use for cleaning body, you can use it. You can buy the towel for this because the only few you can just do it with leather or some wrapper that you don't use. So that's it's what you're doing for yourself. But it's for the public. Please use something that you don't use for your body. Use something that is specific for this and then tie it. You can keep it at the back of your freezer or fridge, which is what I'm going to do with this. Oh, it's very warm. Our yogurt is getting there again. Do this second time. Even inside hammer time, if you do this this way, nothing will make it not to come out fine. It should definitely come out fine, coupled with the fact that you're going to put it behind your freezer or your fridge. 
I don't have a sink, I have a fridge. So I'm going to hide my fridge. And it will be there for 12 hours. Because I want it tart. I want the tangy taste. The sloppy or sour taste. Okay, this is my new selfie. We will finish breaking. Guys, I have to. Oh god. Typing was not easy. So I have to remove this too for you to so I'll be able to type. Even though this one too. I need to remove it too. Not easy. Please take this thing seriously. Do not come and ask me questions when you're not taking this thing seriously. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to put it behind my um, fridge and we'll see it after um, 12 hours. Welcome back everyone. This is 15 hours after. So it's just three hours above 12 hours. So let us open and see how it is. So, wow, this is our yogurt. So, the process now, or the step now is termination. I clean this with this so I can show you. You see, so what you, this is the cord when you know when you finish you see it like settle like pop and this is the cord and the water that's separated is the way this is the way so we're going to break this is termination process so we we'll use our whisk to break it okay this is your creamy sweet yogurt wow so we're just going to break it now all done it's like that was not this has already been sterilized so this is what you use when you want to break your yogurt and you do this you know in a very um slow but consistent pace you don't overdo it so that you don't um, destroy your products. So this is it. You don't overdo this so you don't destroy the consistency. Now I am going to transfer this into my packaging container and freeze it. Do not, sorry, I refrigerate. Do not freeze, please don't. Do not put this in the freezer. Put it in your fridge. So I'm going to pour it right now into my packaging container. You will see how to package. Now, when it's chilled, I will still show you the consistency, but this is it. You see how thick it is? You see how thick it is? So it's not like that watery type that you, the traditional one I was talking about. This consistency is very thick. And by the time it gets into the fridge and gets chilled, it will be thicker than this. Okay. Now we are set to package. I forgot um forgot to tell you that from this we're going to be making our sweetens um you got to. So if you see if you see my pack my container very well, this is unsweetened, yeah. And this is sweetened. These are the cups. So I'm just teaching you a little bit of about packaging here. Now, when I remove the unsweetened one, I'm just going to add a little sugar to the remaining one to make it sweetened. Because this is probiotic culture, so you don't add sugar when you're doing this process from here. If not, it won't ferment well. But if you're using the live bacteria culture, that one is very active, so you can add your sugar when you are producing, okay? If you have any question you can ask me now let's check we're still going to be using this let's 
like kind of funnel now there are packaging funnel or dispensing funnel that you can also buy so the next thing is just to cook okay And we just refrigerate this. This is uns your unsweetened creamy yogurt. My foods. Remember what I told you about life and active culture? So the next will be to sweeten this. Okay. Now, with 15 grams of sugar, we'll just sweeten this. This is it and then so this now this is your flavored you got your sweetened Greek yogurt which is what I'm about to do now now further in the course of this class we'll come across other kinds of flavored yogurt like when you talk about vanilla flavored yogurt strawberry and banana mango or even fruity Okay, I will tell you guys the difference between these things um, as we move on. So what you do here is just to, to, to dissolve the sugar. This should be okay by now. Wow, very sweet. So we process. Now we cook it. So this is our sweetened creamy yogurt and this is drinkable yogurt. This is not your Greek yogurt guys. And we have the unsweetened yogurt. So now you've learned how to do the two of this very easy. So right now I'm going to send them to the fridge to refrigerate. Once it is chilled, I'll come back and show you how it will look at the end of the day. Because it's going to be thicker than this. Thank you guys.